Good morning, church. Good morning. Welcome to worship at Aldersgate United Methodist Church. I am Reverend Sharon Sabom, the intentional inner ministry here, and I welcome you on Pentecost, the day that we celebrate the birth of our church. What a great day to be here. Thank you for those who are wearing red today and a little bit of maroon, but it all works together. As we begin this morning, I want to invite those who are watching at home to scan that little QR code, check in with us so that we know you're worshiping with us today. And while they're doing that at home, I invite you to stand up and greet one another and share the love of Christ this morning. Let's move, okay. All right, let's move back to our seats. Good morning. It is so good to see everyone. I'm Lisa Alexander. I am on staff here at the church, and we just want to welcome you to Aldersgate. I just want to make note that our flowers on the altar is placed here by the kids and grandkids of Kathy and Reed Justice in honor of their 50th wedding anniversary. So, yeah. All right, if this is your first time here at Aldersgate, we are so glad that you are worshiping with us today, whether you're in person or online. If you are in person, we have what we call our in action. You can pick one of these up at the door. And this just lets you know a little bit more about our community and what's going on in there. And inside of that is a connect card. If you feel comfortable filling that out and saying that you're a first time guest and then taking it to, a wel to the welcome center out in the hallway, we have a gift that we wanna give you just for being present with us today. Um, and then if you are a member or returning guest, um, we still want you to fill this connect card out and then you can place yours in the offering plate later in the service. We have several announcements today. There's a lot going on in our community. I encourage everyone to look in there in action. I'm just going to point out just a few things that are happening in our community, but always look on your calendar in your in action. Um, our children and youth are still doing their fundraiser. If you have any loose bills in your pocket, there are some envelopes out in the hallway. You can, if you have six dollars, you can Take the envelope that says $6 and put your $6 in there and drop it in that basket. Um, if you want to do more than that, you can as well. But they are still doing that. And that is raising funds to send our youth and children to camp. Um, so that is still going on out in the hallway. And then our youth director, Nate Carlson, his, him and his family are moving to Sunray. He has been appointed to Sunray First United Methodist Church. And so we are super excited for him and his family. But So we are going to do a come and go reception for him at the, in the patio room next Sunday, June 12th is his last Sunday with us. And so if you want to bring cards um, or gift cards for them, they have a lot of moving and two little boys. And so I'm sure anything that you can do to tell Nate that we love him and we're excited for, the, for them. So that's going to be June 12th, 10.05 in the patio room. We will see y'all there. And then Father's Day, we are wanting to decorate the altars with um, neckties. So if you want to bring a necktie, we would need a bunch of them. So please bring neckties if you want to. We need them all by June 15th. You can bring them to the office. You can bring them on Sunday to the Welcome Center, um, and we will take those neckties. And then on June 16th, which is a Thursday night at 7 p.m., we have something really cool. If you 
make homemade ice cream. We're gonna make homemade ice cream and get to enjoy that, but we're also gonna have a program on the Mount of Olives, and so we are gonna to get to learn more about that. So we're calling it Turning and Learning. So it's gonna be a great time, and um, if you want to, if you need childcare, just let us know. You can email the office at aldersgateabilene.org, or there's a QR code that you can scan. And we also need, if you are gonna make um, homemade ice cream, it, that QR code also lets you let us know that you're going to make ice cream so that we make sure that we know that we have enough ice cream. And then later in the service, um, if you have any tithes and offerings, the um, ushers will be passing the plates and you can drop any of your tithes and offerings and your connect card into the offering plate. Okay, <laughs> we did it. Good job. <laughs> um, let's take a deep breath. And we are going to enter into this time of meditation by reciting our Jesus Creed. This is adapted from Matthew 22. If you will say these words with me. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Will the church stand for the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.
please join in singing our hymn, Holy Spirit, Truth Divine, number 465. be seated. Good morning. Did you have a first good week of summer? Did you have a good first week of summer? You water skied and kneeboard and no broken bones of arms. That's great. I'm impressed. Anything? You went to the horse show and no broken bones or broken legs. I'm impressed. <laughs> well, look here. Do y'all know what these are? You know what this is called? It's called a pinwheel. It's called a pinwheel. Do you know what pinwheels do? Tell everybody. You blow on them and then they spin. Well, that's right. You blow on them and then they spin. But can you see the air or the breeze that makes them spin? No? Then how do you know that that's what makes them spin? Because your mouth moves. Because your mouth moves. <laughs> And anything. Well, I'm going to use the pinwheel as an example of the Holy Spirit. So everybody has on red today for Pentecost, right? And Pentecost is the celebration of the Holy Spirit. But do we always see the Holy Spirit in our lives? Do we see the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm so proud of you. <laughs> uh, but do you feel the Holy Spirit? Yeah. So like when you blow... You don't see what's making it blow. I mean, you don't see my air, do you? But you see the results of it, right? Yes, yes. He's so excited. Yes. It ain't that. So that's how the Holy Spirit is. We don't always see him, but we see what he does for us. Bryson, you need Landon up here because you're like not saying anything to me and you're normally talkative. And where is Sterling? You know, I, I need a I need I need a, a, a front man. <laughs> All right, let's bow our heads and y'all repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for your word. Thank you for my church. I'm glad I'm part of your family. Help me share your love and tell others about Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. You want a pinwheel? You want one? No?
We come now to our scripture reading for this morning, and it comes from John's Gospel, the 14th chapter, verses 8 through 14 and 25 through 27. I invite you to open your Bibles and follow along, read along with me. And if you're watching at home and would like to have a Bible, if you'll visit our community garden on South 19 and Amarillo, first you need to visit the garden, and two, there's a little lending library, a box there. We have Bibles available, and you're more than welcome to take one home with you. So prepare your hearts now to hear the Word of God. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been among you for such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I've been doing, and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask of me anything in my name, and I will do it. All this I have spoken while still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, we've gotten through Mother's Day. Memorial Day is still fading in our memories, and Father's Day is just on the horizon. But this morning, I want to stop and reflect on the true definition of a holiday or even a holy day. Now, I know we've all spent time running through that store looking for that perfect card for that special someone, right? My husband and I have a really bad habit when it comes to those special cards. He likes to stop at the card section, whether it's uh, the grocery store or wherever we are. He'll pick out a beautiful sentimental card and he'll hand it to me, say, hey, honey, read this one. And I'll read it and I give it back to him. He puts it back and says, you know, happy birthday, happy Mother's Day. <laughs> True love. You know, but nowadays it's not just enough if you, you can't just buy a card for Mother's Day. You have to buy a card for every relative who is a mother. And now the same thing goes for Father's Day. And now the card industry has really got some of us nailed because now your pet has to give a card to their human on their special day. Ow. And some have begun to call these um, Hallmark Holidays after the holiday greeting card company that seems to create new reasons for us to have to celebrate something and buy yet another card. But does this ever-increasing card-buying events make it a holiday by definition? I mean, the very word holiday comes to us from the word holy day, which would imply some kind of a religious observance is being involved. But other than the, the biggies like Christmas and Easter, most religious holidays don't even get a slot in the card rack. For example, if you were a Buddhist, your big day would be Buddha's birthday, which would be on April 8 or May 8, depending upon who you're talking to. But there are no Buddha birthday cards in the rack. And if there were, they'd probably be passed over for more enlightenment. The Mormons celebrate Pioneer Day on July 24. 
that date in 1847 when Brigham Young pushed those carts over the hills and landed in Salt Lake Valley in Utah and there proclaimed, this is the place. The whole state shuts down, but there's not a greeting card for that. And then up in the hills in Park City, Utah, the celebrities engage in the annual, what we call the Festival of Lights, called Sundance. But in the Native American community, the Sundance is a time for uh, Thanksgiving for the harvest. In both cases, there's a lot of dancing, but there's no card. The Hindus celebrate Diwali. The Sikhs get down on Guru Nanak Day, which involves reading the Sikh scriptures for 72 hours straight, which is interesting stuff, but not card worthy. The Judeo-Christian tradition has similar holy days, but they're still not a Harmak holiday. Hanukkah and Yom Kippur are great Jewish holidays, but Shavat, the festival of weeks, it doesn't make a card cut either. And while Christmas is the ultimate card sending event, and unfortunately Easter has turned into the festival of the chocolate bunnies, Christians and greeting card writers look right past Pentecost. Now you would think that a card company giant like Hallmark would be all over this holiday. I mean, what is there not to like? You've got your fire, you've got the wind, you've got speaking in other languages, you have the birth of the greatest religious movement in history. You have everything built in that you need for a holiday spirit. And it would lend itself to, you know, slogans like, you know, hope you get fired up this Pentecost. Only we won't say that here because we're a little sensitive about fire right now. But the shelves are empty when it comes to a card for Pentecost. And not only are the shelves empty for the card, generally our churches are empty on Pentecost. So far, I have never had to set up extra chairs in a sanctuary because of Pentecost Sunday. I've never had to plan an additional worship service because so many people were coming to celebrate Pentecost. So has Pentecost been just passed over and forgotten? Should we be making a bigger deal of this day when the Christian movement was stoked by the fire of the Holy Spirit? Probably. I mean, after all, it's pretty awesome to think about what happened that day. And maybe the whole idea of celebrating uh, Pentecost, sometimes we tend to think of it as it being just a, an event in the past, but really it's embracing a present reality. The scripture this morning from John 14 gives us a clue that the working of the Holy Spirit was not a one-shot event. Jesus is preparing to return to the Father. He's preparing his disciples for his departure. They're still confused about what he is saying. And so Philip speaks up for the rest of the group and says, Lord, show us the Father and we'll be satisfied. In other words, can you give us a sign? Can, can you make it a little more plain? And Jesus' response was to remind Philip and the others, he'd been doing that all along, and what they needed to do was believe. And if you were reading the passage this morning, you'll notice the word believe is used three times as a way of linking Jesus' work on behalf of the Father with their work as disciples. And as God the Father dwelt in Jesus, so would the Spirit of Jesus dwell in them, so much more that they would do works that were even greater than these. Their belief was to translate into action. Now that's a good thought, isn't it? The belief is to translate into action. And their love for Jesus would find its foundation in obedience to his commandments or his instructions. 
These words of Jesus were designed to comfort the disciples. They had been relying on him for everything, and now he's leaving them. But he's not just leaving them hanging with a memory. He's leaving them with the Spirit to guide them. So his departure is to make the way for another, the Holy Spirit, who would come and instruct and motivate, uh, encourage and counsel and intercede, and who would be with them now forever. His work would continue through them, through the Holy Spirit. And while that seems to be something to celebrate, Jesus was really quick to remind the disciples that their association with him wouldn't make them universally popular or revered. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, is the spiritual equivalent of Jesus who called himself the way, the truth, and the life. And by taking the Spirit of Christ into their own lives, the disciples would be making themselves subject to the same trials that Jesus had faced. The coming of the Holy Spirit should remind us that claiming to be followers of the historical Jesus is one thing, but allowing the Spirit of the risen Christ to fully live in us is something else. The former can be confined to simply knowing a lot about Jesus, about knowing, you know, which holidays we have. But the latter involves representing Jesus and acting every day on his behalf according to his model of faith and, and life. And when we do that, we're likely to run into opposition from those who are comfortable with the world as it is or the status quo. Jesus bugged people with the truth. And if we are truly following him, we're going to be doing the same. An invitation to a life of suffering and struggle isn't exactly the kind of greeting card that you want to open and put on your mantle. Pentecost was the catalyst for an explosive growth in the church, and the Spirit came and moved among them. But that same spirit would move many of those people into dangerous and deadly situations where they were forced to fully rely on the spirit of Christ and that this was the only advocate that they would have in front of the angry mobs. We may not be called to give our lives in the same way that they did, but if we take seriously the spirit as a guide in our lives, we might find ourselves living quite uncomfortably. Jesus promised us the Spirit, but he didn't promise that life would be easy. But with the challenge of the indwelling Spirit also comes the promise that the Holy Spirit would remind the disciples of what they had been taught. They would be left with the peace of Jesus, not peace as we think of it in terms of absence of conflict or the false security that the world gives, but the peace that's born out of life and love of knowing Jesus Christ. Given the work that those first disciples did, given the work that we do now as we are their spiritual descendants, we might look upon Pentecost as being a true holy day not necessarily a holiday where we can kick back and just reminisce about what once was. The coming of the Spirit is a present, active reality that motivates us to work, to act, to represent Jesus Christ to the world. And you can't confine the work of the Spirit to just one day out of the year. Sure, we need to stop on Pentecost Sunday. We need to remember the coming of the Spirit and the birth of the church. But every day should be Pentecost. Every day we should feel the Spirit blowing through us and filling us with that desire to go and to serve God with our whole hearts. So my friends, this is the message that I want you to take when you leave. Let every day 
be Pentecost. Feel the wind of the Spirit blowing through you. Let it fire up your desire to serve God daily and serve Him with your whole heart. A greeting card for Pentecost? I don't know. Maybe we don't need one because we have the Holy Spirit with us. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. bow for a prayer. God of all creation and all peoples, we offer thanks to you that you hold our heart in yours and that you hear our prayers, whether we speak with the eloquence of saints or with sighs too deep for words. Ever grateful for your presence, we gather ourselves for prayer in this place as your disciples gathered on the day of Pentecost. Open our hearts to the power of your spirit that we might be a people refreshed in our dedication to you. Fire us up with courage to allow ourselves to be baptized anew this day as a new creation in service to you. Confirm in us a sense of what it means to be a people of faith, whether by listening with an open heart, visiting with the homebound, or praying for the needs of one another. Grant us the grace to allow the Holy Spirit to work within us that we might live as faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. And let it be that by knowing us, others may know you. Through us, O God, let your kingdom come. Guide us now as we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now I'd like to invite our ushers to come forward as we present our tithes and our offerings. for Pentecost, we have a special communion liturgy, and we're going to be singing the responses. The tune is from Holy, 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 and the words will be on the screen. And I also remind you that once again, this is the Lord's table, and it's an open communion table. Whoever hears the invitation is welcome to join us with communion this morning. So here now the invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him and seek to grow into his likeness. Let us draw near with faith and make our humble confession and prepare to receive this holy sacrament. Spirit of truth coming from the depths of God, 
You know all too well what lurks deep within us. We confess that we have not loved one another as the Lord has loved us. We are quick to find fault and spread gossip, sins that undermine the whole fellowship of believers. We have left the strangers and seekers among us feeling like outsiders. We have not done our best to carry the good news of Jesus Christ beyond these walls. Forgive our casual disregard of the Lord's command to go and make disciples. We have not used faithfully the powerful gifts of love and service you gave the church at Pentecost. Renew a right spirit within us that we might carry Christ's love and mercy from this place into our weekday community and into the world beyond. We pray in the name of Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Father, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. In the beginning, your spirit moved over the face of the waters. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. Your spirit came upon the prophets and the teachers, anointing them to speak your word. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. At his baptism in the Jordan, your spirit descended upon him and declared him to be your beloved Son. With your spirit upon him, he turned away from the temptations of sin. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always, baptizing us with the Holy Spirit and with fire, as on the day of Pentecost. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance on me. And on the day that you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread and in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, 
we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Father, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood and empowered by the gifts of the Spirit. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world showing forth the fruits of the Holy Spirit until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. He took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, take, eat. This is my body broken for you. And he took the cup and he blessed it. And he said, drink from this all of you, that this is a sign of a new covenant. All who hear his words are welcome to come. Will those who are serving please come forward?
Our hymn is number 558. We'll sing the chorus and then the four verses starting with verse 2. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. church we are the church together all who follow jesus all around the world yes we're the church together sometimes the church is marching sometimes it's bravely burning sometimes it's riding sometimes hiding always it's learning i am the church you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. And when the people gather, they're singing and there's praying, then swearing and there's crying, sometimes all of it say. Church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. At Pentecost, some people received the Holy Spirit and told the good news through the world to all. Will you join me now in our mantra? The secret is simply this, Christ in me, yes, Christ in me, bringing with him the hope of all the glorious things to come. And may we be covered in the dust of our rabbi. And now my friends go now in this, with the strength of the Holy Spirit uniting us together let us go forth and build his kingdom. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen, amen. Sola Sancta Caritas.